Ezra, before we broke for lunch, I was just, I think we were at the point where the police had left and you and Alex are now leaving his house. Yes. All right. Whose car were you in? My car. Who was driving? I was driving. When you left Alex's car, did you go to drive, uh, Alex's car, excuse me, your car, Alex's yes. house. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. Did you go to drive anywhere in particular? No. What was your intentions? It was briefly discussed about maybe possibly going to a park or just somewhere in common to speak. We didn't settle on something. As you were driving, were you paying much attention to where you were going? No, just driving. What was the subject of the conversation between you and Alex as you're leaving his house and starting to drive? What we had started talking about is like feelings towards the relationship we had had and he started to now speak about how he felt about my relationship with Jason and how he felt about our relationship ending. What was Alice's mood or demeanor during this conversation? Alex was very solemn and he seemed frustrated. As he was talking and you were talking, yes. um, what was happening to you and your feelings? I started feeling anxious after our conversation being abruptly interrupted. I just, and now we were driving and talking about me and Jason and things like that, I started to feel anxious, just uneasy. What did you do as a result of that anxiety? As a result of my anxiety, I asked him if it would be all right if he could drive for a while. How did he respond? He said, yes, yeah, I can drive. It's fine. So what happened after he told you he could drive? After we briefly parked, we switched drivers and he started to drive me. Do you know where you were at that particular point? No. When he was driving at that point, did the conversation continue? Yes. Were you paying attention at all to where he was going? No, I was trying to focus on what he was saying. Uh, did you know where he was going or direct him to a certain direction at all? No, we were just driving. What was the conversation about then? The conversation was more led by him at this point and he was voicing his opinion about my continuation of the relationship with Jason. And as that conversation to continued, was there at some point that Alex stopped the car? Yes. Do you know where that was? It was just some road. We just stopped. And when he stopped the car, what happened? When, he, when we stopped the car, well, when he stopped the car, he just, we, we sat there for a moment and a car passed us, not much happened other than he started to pull into what seemed like a driveway. And was this, okay, just to clarify, where he initially pulled the car over, was it on the muddy road or was it on a paved road? It was on a paved road, lean, turning into the muddy road. It's the best way to describe it. All right, but at that point, had he completely gone onto the muddy road yet? No. After um, he decided to start driving again, yes. what did he do? He started driving, he proceeded to drive up the muddy road, and that's when we started to get stuck. First of all, you've seen the pictures with the gate at the muddy road. Was the yes. gate open or closed? It was open. All right. So when you say he got stuck or started to get stuck, what do you mean? As we started to drive up this muddy road, it's kind of at an incline. We got stuck in the mud the first time. Um, was there conversation about why he was driving up the muddy road? No. Well, it was just kind of, this seems like a nice place to stop, I guess. All right. Was there a plan to do something? Once to get out, and we both love nature, so to get out, maybe look around a bit, explore, talk. When he got the car stuck, what happened? When he got the car stuck in the road, I said, I can take over. I think I can 
pull it out of the mud. So we had, we then again switched drivers. What happened when you decided you were going to try to, uh, well, let me ask you first. Had you ever been to this place before? No, I've never seen it before. Did you know where you were? No. You get in the driver's seat. Were you able to move the car? Yes. Were you able to do that without the assistance of any objects? Just, yes. Okay. How, and once you were able to move the car, where was Alex sitting when you did that? Or where was Alex? I'm sorry. That's what I meant to ask. Alex was in the passenger seat with me. When you were able to move the car, what did you do? I was able to move the car because I maneuvered it onto what seemed to be grass. So it wasn't muddy. It <coughs> seemed like the frost hadn't given out yet. So I proceeded to drive up this hill of sorts, and then I got stuck in the mud. You've seen the pictures of your car stuck in the mud? Yes. Did your car ever move again while no. you were there? Let me ask you now, you're stuck in the mud. Yes. What efforts do you make to get unstuck? Well, I tried your typical backing up a little bit, moving forward, maybe turning the wheel this way, turning the wheel that way a little bit, but... You mean you turn the wheel to right and to left? Since? Yes, okay. to see if anything would help get this out of the mud, but it just, the, the tires at one point just started spinning. There was no use. Um, did Alex get out and try to help push at all? No. And did you try to use any objects to get yourself unstuck? I looked for some in my car, yes, after we stopped. Okay, first of all, did you look for things in the inside of your car? Yes. What did you look for in the inside of your car? I was hoping there would be a brick in my car, board, anything I can use to wedge under maybe one of the tires to gain some traction. Did you find anything you could do that with? No. Did you look in the trunk of your car? Yes. What did you look for in the trunk of your car? I looked for the same thing, but there wasn't anything that I wanted to have to stick under my tire and see it break or get ruined. W was there something specific in your trunk you didn't want to get ruined? My tent. And did at some point you take a blanket out? Yes, a, I took a blanket out when I was looking in the back of my car, kind of in the back footwells, in the, in the seat area. I set it on the ground near the open door. I wasn't too concerned that it was on the ground. Okay. When you say the open door, which door are you referring to? The driver's side back seat door. Why was that door open? The door was open so that I could look for anything. And did you ever close that door? No. What about a pillow? Did you take a pillow out at all? Yes, a pillow had come out when I took the blanket out. So that just happened? Yes, it just happened. Okay. So you're in the um, mud. You're yes. stuck. Yes. What is Alex doing to try to help you get unstuck? At that point, he was very quiet. He wasn't doing really much. He was. He kind of stepped back, and he seemed like he was just letting me look and try to figure this out. Um. The things that were in your trunk, I know there's um, been um, some pictures shown that there's a couple of knives back in the trunk. Yes. Were you aware those were in there? Not consciously, no. Do you know how they got in the back of your trunk? There's always various one, knives from moving place to place between my mom's and my dad's. And from there was a lot of things in my trunk from moving out of my apartment. So they, somewhere between moves. Was one of those knives something Jason had given you? Yes. And what condition was it in? It was, one of the clasps was broken. We also saw a picture of what looked like a steak knife or a kitchen knife. Yes. Did you know that was in there? I didn't know that was in there, no. Did you take those knives out at any time? No. Did you go into your center council to try and get anything to move the car? No, I didn't really look in there. Um, at some point, did Alex get out of the car too? Yes. 
And at some point, did you move other items from around in your car in the back seat? Just as, well, let me, what I want to ask you about is the paintings Max gave you. Do you yes. know if you moved those at all? I did move the paintings. One of the paintings was upright, so I moved it to the front seat. I didn't want it to get ruined and me rummaging around. And the other painting had slipped under the seat. So when you moved that painting, the larger yes. painting, or maybe we could call the abstract painting? Yes. Where was Alex at that point? Alex was outside of the car. After not finding anything to move the car, um, yes. what was what were you going to do next? Breathe. I was feeling, I was like, how oh, great. I don't know where I am. I have no idea. I'm stuck in the mud. I don't know what to do. Just, I need to breathe. I'm just going to show you this diagram that has been used previously. It's exhibit number 285. Thank you. And just to orient you. Yes. Do you understand what the, is being shown I here? I do. Okay. So. This diagram shows tire marks in two different places. Yes. All right. The diagram shows two pillows. Is that the pillow I was asking you about? Yes, it's my pillow. Okay. And although I'm sure it's marked on here, it's not. The diagram shows a blanket? Yes. All right. Now, this is your car. Did you notice something next to your car by where you were stuck? Yes, I noticed a large, what seemed to be military trailer. At some point, did you go over by that trailer? Yes. Why? I... It was a bit tall for me to look inside, but I kind of peeked at it to see if there might have been something. I stopped focusing on it and I decided to go sit just kind of on the hitch of the trailer. Okay, do you see this pointed object near where it says trailer? Yes. Is that a visual, though not accurate, representation of the hitch? Yes. So when you went over to the hitch, what did you do? I went over to the hitch of the trailer and I decided to sit on it and I was just trying to breathe through the anxiety and the feelings of being stuck, not knowing where I am. And I was just kind of looking out into the woods, sitting on this hitch of sorts. During the time that you're sitting and looking out into the woods, was Alex talking with you at all? He was behind me, but he was at my car at that point. Was he in your line of vision or how, let me just ask this, how did you know he was at your car? I could hear him open and close the door. Was he talking to you at all? No. During this time, were you facing towards Alex or away from Alex? I was facing away from Alex towards the woods. Did there come a time where, as you were facing away from Alex towards the woods, that he approached you at all? Yes, he had approached me from behind. Well, since he's from behind, how do you know he's there? I could feel him. I could feel that he was there. I could hear him approach. I could feel just that somebody was behind me. When he approached, what happened? As I was sitting there, he approached me from behind and he, he wrapped his arms around me. It was kind of a hug. He held me there for a little while. Did you say anything? I... I kind of tensed. I didn't really reciprocate the hug, and it was it was kind of a silent moment between us. But I felt awkward and uneasy, and I wasn't I wasn't in a it wasn't a time for me to feel like I wanted a hug. I guess. And let me ask you something else. Do you know whether or not Alex had a phone with him? Yes. Did you have a working phone with you? No. Um, you had your iPod, I gather. Yes. Uh, and the phone without the minutes? Yes. All right. Did you ask Alex at any point to make a phone call on his phone to try and get um, no. a tow truck? No. Did I he did not. offer to make any calls or try to get a tow truck? It was a very brief kind of quick conversation about, should we call somebody for this? And I was like, I can handle it, I think. So, no, we did not make a phone call. All right, you could handle it, but you hadn't been able to move the car. What are you thinking when you're saying, I can handle this? What I'm thinking is, I don't want to get my car towed because of how expensive it is. 
I didn't want to have to pay for that. Okay. So let's go back to him coming over. He gives you a hug. Yes. What happens after he gives you the hug? After he gives me the hug and I, I tense. I think he felt that because he let go after he held me for a while. And I think he could see that I was breathing. I was trying to breathe through some anxiety and he suggested that maybe I should go lay down or look around in the car again. Okay, when you say you were breathing, can you describe what you mean to the to all of us? What I mean is I'm I'm sitting there and I'm just all of, I, a lot is running through my mind and I was breathing heavily. I just there I was my anxiety was heightened at that time. I was trying to breathe through it, so I was trying to deeply breathe. It wasn't working too well. Is deep breathing something you've used to try to control anxiety? Yes. Did Alex say anything else to you after he had eventually come over? He suggested that I might want to lay down for a while and maybe just relax. What did you think when Alex said that? I just shrugged and was like, all right, maybe. And I decided to walk back towards the car. When you walked back to the car, did you go in the car? I went into the car, yes. Where in the car did you return? I returned to the car. I returned to the driver's side back door was open, and I approached into the car. I kind of looked around a little bit, moved some things a little more, and that's how I was getting into the car, was from the back. Why were you going to the back seat and not the front seat? I was thinking, maybe he's right. I need to lay down for a little bit. Did you lie down? I did. At some point after lying down, did Alex join you? Yes, he did join me. How were you laying down when he came over? When he came over, I was still... When he first came over, I was still in a somewhat crouched position. So I felt him while well, I heard him approach, and I laid down. I got into the car further, and I laid down on my back. When you laid on the back, what happened with Alex? When I laid down, Alex had started to come into the car with me and posi position himself above me. He's, you could say, straddled. Was Alex speaking to you at that point? Yes, he started to speak to me at this point, yes. Can you tell us the words you heard Alex speak to you? <laughs> what he said to me at this time was he started to describe me, and not in, in a third-person sense. And he also started to speak of how he deserves this. Well, l let's just stop, because I don't know what you mean by he describes you in a third-person sense. Can you tell us specifically what you remember him saying? Specifically what I remember him saying is, Ezra is beautiful. Ezra is my shining sun. Ezra, in the sense he kept saying my name and then something after that. Ezra is so handsome. All right, so Ezra is beautiful. Ezra is my shining sun. Ezra is handsome. Had he ever talked to you that way before? He hadn't talked to me. He's he said pet names before. He's sweet talked to me before, but this was different because it was disconnected. It was third person. So in other words, are you... Like before he would say, you are this, you are that? He would say, you're beautiful, you're handsome, you're this, you're that. But at this point, at this time, he was saying, Ezra is, instead of, it was more as if I was an object. After he's saying Ezra's beautiful, Ezra... to that last comment, it uh, calls for speculation. That's how uh, she felt. I believe that's perfectly admissible. Are you objecting to the previous question before yes, the answer? Yes, previous answer before council started again. Uh, I'm going to it. Go ahead. All right. So you're feeling um, that he's referring to as an object. What else are you feeling at that point? At that point, I'm not so sure how to really think about what was happening. I was a little confused because it 
He hadn't come on to me earlier that day. I didn't think he was going to do this. I was starting to feel my anxiety come back full force. Did he do anything with respect to uh, your glasses? Yes, he started to do things slowly and methodically. He first removed my glasses. When your glasses are off, can you see? No, not at all. Fairly past a couple inches in front of my face. So when he removed your glasses, what were you able to see? I was able to see that he was in front of me. I was, that's, I can't see much. I think you were saying that in addition to his referring to you in the third person, he was also saying something else. Can you tell me what else you heard? That I was handsome and that I, he deserved this. He, I had betrayed him. I went back to Jason. He was upset about this and that he deserved me. After Alex says he deserved you and takes off your glasses, what does he do? He then takes my scarf and he places it over my eyes. And I felt his hand on my face and he asked me if I could see him. And I told him, no, I cannot. So he puts this, you tell him you can't see him. What does he do next? After... He asks me a few times if I can see him, and I tell him, no, I can't see you, Alex. I, I can't see him, but I can feel him start to touch my clothes. What's going through your head? What's going through my head at this time is, I don't know what he, I, I was assuming what I thought I knew what he wanted, and I wasn't sure, and I was anxious, and I, what was going on was going through my head. Were you going to tell him to stop? I hadn't really voiced much until after he had kissed me. Then after kissing you, but about the other things he was doing, touching oh. your clothes, caressing you, or whatever he did, I'm not sure what he did, but... No, I just was quiet and I was still. Okay, I want to get back to his actions as you were quiet. Yes. What is he doing besides kissing you? What does he do? After he kisses me and I pull my head back a bit, I felt he touched the hem of my sweater. I could feel a pull on it. And I wasn't sure at the time really what he was doing but I could feel it start to give away. It felt looser, and my sweater had been opened. Did you know how he had opened your sweater? I, after I felt my sweater start to give away, I took off the scarf, and I could see that he was cutting my sweater. All right. When he kissed you, did you tell him to stop? Yes. Why stop, say stop about the kissing? He didn't ask me if he could kiss me. I couldn't see he was going to do it. I just, it was so sudden and it caught me off guard and I didn't, it was strange. It caught you off guard. You asked him to stop. Did he stop kissing you or continue? He, kiss, he tried to kiss me again, but I tried to pull away with my limited room where I was. So now he's cut your sweater open. Do you tell him stop then? No, I froze. What does he do after he cuts your sweater? After he cuts through my sweater, he then starts to cut through my second shirt. Do you move then? No. Why not? I'm just trying to breathe. I'm frozen. I don't know what to do. When you I'm... say frozen, what do you mean? What I mean when I'm frozen is that I'm just, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm limp. I'm, I'm not moving or resisting or fighting. I'm just, I'm there. Why? I didn't know what to do. After he cuts through your shirt, what's the very next thing you feel? The next thing I feel is that my second shirt starts to get cut. And I can feel that he's cutting it, but I also feel a slight prick or something. And 
After that, he moves to my pants. Were you able to see what he was cutting with? Yes. What was it? It was a knife. Now, about that knife, had you taken that knife out during the time that you were stuck? No. Um, when you came back to the car before you got in the back seat, had you noticed that something was different? I noticed something was different. I looked in, I looked into the front of my car and I noted how it was strange that my wallet was out of the console and that my middle console was open. I thought it was strange. Let me take you back to the cutting. So yes. He's cut through your sweater. He's cut through your shirt. He's cut a little bit into your T-shirt. You have felt something on your ne yes. stomach, I believe. And after that, what does he do next? After that, he starts to cut through my pants. He's starting near the button, well, below that. It's on the front of my pants or the inner thigh, you can say. I can feel that he's pulled on it to give room so that he can cut through. Was there, besides your pants, was he cutting through anything else at this point? At this point, he had cut through my tights as well. Where on your pants and your tights has he cut through at this point? At this point, he had cut through the inner thigh area of my pants and tights. After he's cutting through your pants and your tights, what happens next? Do you feel anything different at some point? What was different? at this point is that I could feel the knife start to graze and cut into my skin. Where in your skin do you feel it? I feel it on <clears throat> my vagina. I feel it. It's inside the hip region. I could just feel a pinch and I could feel that the knife had been meeting contact with Are me. Are you moving? At this point I was still frozen. After he feels you cut, you feel him cut you in the vaginal area and in the inner thigh, what does he do next? After I felt that, at this point, I had started to shift and I brought my leg up. Okay, I'm going to do before you brought your leg up, though. Yes. All right, what I want to ask you, as you're there, as you're frozen, as you're thinking, yes. what is going through your mind? Before I even moved, what was going through my mind is he's going to do what he wants. He's going to take anything he wants. He's he's going to just, he's going to use me. I don't know what to do. I'm terrified. I couldn't move. Had Alex ever cut you with a knife before? No. What is different about this as you're laying there and he's cutting you with this knife? What's so different about this is that in the past, only clothes had been cut, but this is the first time he ever cut me with the knife. What are you afraid of now? I'm afraid he's going to kill me. As you're afraid he's going to kill you, at some point, why are you afraid he's going to kill you? Let me just first ask that. I'm afraid he's going to kill me because he has a knife. And I'm afraid that he's going to take whatever he wants and he's just going to finish this. All of the things you've read about Alex, and I'm not going to go through his books and his philosophies again, were the things that he had talked about with you, the names he had called you, the discussions about sacrifice, consent, did yes. that, I mean, is your mind swirling? Or what, what are you thinking? My mind is running through his words that he deserves this. My mind is running through all of the possibilities of what he could want, of what he's going to take. I... I was wondering if he was going to kill me and then he was going to kill himself so that he didn't have to be alone. All right, you're wondering this. At some point, do you manage to work yourself out of your frozen state? Yes. Tell us when that happens. When this happens, I bring my leg up to position it more between Alex's legs. When you say you bring your leg up, do you know which leg you're talking about? Yes. All right, and at this point, do you feel anything? Yes, I feel him run the knife down a few times, the pants, and the pants open, and then I feel that he punctures my leg. At the point where he's running the knife and cutting yes. you and punctures you, are you, besides the fact that you've brought your leg up, are you moving your leg at any point yet? No, I was just closing off the area of my vagina. I know that we're talking about this slowly, but in terms of the time it's taking as he's doing this, what 
fast, slow? It was very slow at first. It was slow. It, it was. It felt. It was very slow, and then as I brought my leg up is when it started to happen faster. Things were starting to happen now. After you feel the puncture in your leg, yes, and he's cut these, uh, you know, into your leg. Yes. What do you do to try to move? What I'm doing to try to move is I have my right hand gripping the side of the seat. I was just thinking maybe if I can pull myself away, maybe if I can do something, I can get out, I can get away from this. I need to move, I need to start to move. I was screaming at myself internally, you need to move. Are you saying anything? No. Did you try somehow to reach for anything with your other hand, your left hand? Yes, when my leg was pulled up, my leg is pulled up and I'm closing off the area of my vagina. I take my hand, my free hand, my left hand, and I grab for and bat at the knife that is puncturing my leg. What do you feel when that happens? I feel like a pinch or a prick on my hand every time I go to block it. So when you feel that cutting into your hand, what do you do with your hand? I pull my hand away. Do you do something else then to try to resist him? Yes, my what hand, as ahead, my leg is between his knees at that point, gripping the seat, I decided then to knee him in the groin. What happens when, well, you decided to knee him in the groin. Did you actually do it? Yes. What happens then? He reacts and he drops the knife at that point. When he drops the knife, what do you do? Instantly, I grab the knife and I have pulled, I've used my arm to pull myself into the footwell. And that's when it, that's when everything really starts to happen. All right, I'm gonna to talk to you about everything starting to happen. You have the knife. Yes. What are you doing with the knife? At this point, I have the knife. I'm trying to get out of the car. I just need, I need to get out. I need to get away is all I'm saying. And I can't get out of the car and he's still grabbing for me. And this is when I began to defend myself and stab Alex. Now, you're saying you want to get out of the car. You're no longer lying down on the seat with your head by the passenger side door. Where in the car are you at this point as you're trying to get out and you're holding this knife? At this point, when the knife is my, in my hand, I am trapped between the open door and the middle of the car, so where the console would be, or the seat. You said you grab the knife and you yes. start stabbing. Yes. Where's the back, where's your back at that point, or which direction are you facing it? I'm facing, what would be forward at this point is the rear of the car. I'm facing Alex, but I, my back is pressed against the driver. Where is Alex? Alex is in front of me, he's in between, he's not directly in front of me, but he's in between me and the door. Are you trying to get out? Yes. You said you're unable to get out, so what do you start doing? What I start doing is defending myself. I was, as Alex is grabbing me, I started stabbing him anywhere and everywhere I could. I didn't know what was happening. I just needed to get away. I just needed to get out of the car. Were you consciously aiming for any particular place when you were stabbing him? No, it was just, it was happening fast and it, it was anywhere and everywhere. Do you have any memory of the order in which you stabbed him at all? No. Do you have um, any memory in particular of him uh, attacking you as you're stabbing? Yes, as I'm trying to get out of this car as I'm trying to make my way to the open door, Alex grabs me by the throat and I'm pressed, my body and my head is pressed against the driver's side back of the seat. And is this happening before you stabbed him, as you're starting, do you remember? It's happening as it was, as I was stabbing him. Okay, so he's grabbing you by the throat. Do you, you saw a red mark from these pictures on your throat? Yes. Is that where he was grabbing you? Yes. And besides grabbing you in the throat, what else is he doing to you? Do you know? His hand slips from my throat and it moves to the back of my head where he grabs my hair. What happens when he grabs your hair? Do you remember? 
I remember as he grabbed my hair, he was holding it very tight and he was pulling my face towards him. And I remember that's when I had stabbed him inside the head. Why did you do that? I, it was a response to being pulled so close to his face. When you did that and you're stabbing him and he's grabbing you by the throat, he's pulling your hair, um, as this is going on, at some point does he let go? Yes. When he lets go, what does he do? He didn't just let go, he had ripped my hair out from my head. And he then got out of the car. When he gets out of the car, well, let me ask this, first of all. Before he gets out of the car and you're doing the stabs, are you trying to kill him? No. What are you trying to do? I just want to get away. I need to get out of the car. I need to get away as fast as I could. So why do you keep stabbing him while you're still in the car? Because he wouldn't let go. He wouldn't let me out. I was terrified. He wouldn't let go of you? No. Where? My throat and my head. When he lets go and he goes out of the car, do you run after him and keep stabbing him? No, I was... What do you do? I was crumpled. I was inside the car still, and I was sitting inside the car on the driver's side seat. At some point, do you get out of the car? Yes. And where is Alex at that point in time? Alex is standing up near what was the green trailer. Did Alex say something to you as he's standing up there? Yes. I was confused. I didn't... Well, I just want you to tell us... What he said what to he me, said. what I heard him say to me was that he needed help to go to the bathroom. He needed help doing this. When he said to you he needs help going to the bathroom, what do you do? I instantly just wanted to help him, so I got out of the tr car and I approached him. When you approached him... How are you feeling when you approach him? Disconnected and dizzy and full of ink. I couldn't breathe. Well, if you're so afraid, why do you go by him? I just wanted to help. It's my first response is to help someone. So you go by him, you're going to yes. help him. Yes. And at this point, what does he do? When I go to approach to help him, I come near him. And this is when he grabs me again, and he pulls me very close and tight to his body. Where's the knife? The knife is in my hand still. When he pulls you close and tight to your body, what are you thinking? He's going to kill me. What do you do as you're thinking he's going to kill you? I s reached around and just quickly stabbed him in the side, hoping he would let go. Why do you think he's going to kill you at this point as he's grabbing you close? I thought he was going to pull me down to the ground and get the knife. Why do you reach around and stab him? Why, I mean, are you not face to face or? It's because I'm pulled tight to his body and that is the only place my arm could go. Did you stab him anymore after that? No. All right, after this last stab wound, where do you go? I retreated back into the car and I sat there shivering. When you're doing that, were you watching at all what Alex was doing? Yes. What did you see him do? Alex took his coat off, and he laid it on the ground near the trailer, and then he proceeded to lay down on the coat. You know, I think I had forgotten to ask you, but in this earlier struggle in the car, had your boots come off at all? Yes, one of my boots had come off. Do you know which one it was? No. And did you later take off another boot? Yes. Had you done that yet at this point? No. He's laying on his coat. Can you? Is he talking at all? I could hear him speaking, yes. Can you hear what he's saying? I, I could hear him saying that he had been waiting for this for so long. I heard him saying strange things about roommates and he just kept saying he's been waiting for this for so long. After you hear that, what do you do? I was still in the car at that point and was breathing and I kept saying out loud what's happening, what's going on, and this is when I decided I needed to go. I needed to get away. All right, so you decide you need to go. Um, are you kind of like almost 
feeling like things are black at all? Or are you conscious? Or what's going on with you? I'm feeling like... Like it's... Things are... I feel dizzy and faint. That I can't catch my breath. That things are starting to go black at the sides. It felt like I was in a tunnel. Like I could only see so much around me. Does Alex keep talking? Or eventually... Or, you know, does he stop at some point? He was not talking anymore at that point. And at, when you're in the car, do you find your glasses? Yes. Was this the first time you found your glasses? Yes. Up until that point, had, you had problems with what you could see? Yes. I couldn't see at all. I hadn't put my glasses on yet. When you put your glasses on, what, what do you do next? I put my glasses on and I could see everything and... I'm sorry. This is the point when I decided I needed to go. I needed to get out of there. I was panicking. I couldn't breathe. Did you see a phone? Yes. Whose phone? I seen Alex's phone. Did you take it? Yes. Why? In my head, I wanted to call the police. I wanted to get help. I wanted to do anything I could do. All right. At that point, you're thinking that as you leave the car, do you still have the knife? Yes. What do you do with that knife? What I did with that knife is I looked down and I opened my sleeve with the tip of it and I hastily scratched the word boy into my arm. Okay, everyone wants to know, why did you scratch boy into your arm? I've thought about it and when I think about this, I don't know. At that time, it's something that just happened. It was just a reaction. I really, I'm, I don't know why I did this. Had you ever cut yourself before? Yes. When had you cut yourself before? In the past, when I had cut myself on my arm was at times when I felt like I couldn't breathe, when I felt numb, when I felt like I needed to act because I couldn't feel anything. It woke me up in a sense. Did you feel that way at this time? Yes. Objection. Relevance. I know 402 or 404, I mean. I think I'm asking about her feelings right afterwards. We're right in this incident. I'm asking her what she's feeling. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to overrule. Go ahead. Continue. Thank you. All right. I, you've already said how you feel. After you cut boy in your arm, do you know where you were when you did that? At that point is when I was... Trying to, I was staying away from Alex because of the fear. I was at the end of the car, and I had my hand placed on the back of the car. After you cut boy in your arm, what do you do? Well, first of all, are, is your second shoe on at this point? No. When you leave, where is Alex? Alex is still laying on his coat. Do you know, or did, had you noticed whether or not he had his shoes on at that point or not? He still had his shoes on at that point. And when you say he's laying on his coat, where is he laying on his coat? He's laying on his coat near the green trailer. You've cut boy in your arm. <clears throat> yes. You told Detective Proc that you wouldn't forget, you did to not forget. Today you're saying you're searching your mind and you just don't know. There's so many things I could think that it, it could be, but I, I search my mind and when I think about this, I really just don't know the answer. Where do you go after you have cut boy in your arm? After I cut boy in my arm, I started to make my way down that dirt driveway. You told Detective Proc that you could not get this outside of your head. What did you mean by that? I couldn't get the feeling outside of my head. I couldn't get the panic, the, the visual of the horror of seeing Alex and seeing the blood. You, some of the things that you've said in court, but what I meant to ask you before that was, the way you've related this is a little bit different than some of what you related to Detective Proc when you told him what happened. Yes. A couple of days later. 
And do you have an ex explanation or know why you remember this a little differently now? I've had time to process it. I've had time to process it. I, and the moment while well, speaking to Proc, it was fresh, all of the feelings. Is I was feeling the emotions and the sights, and now I've had significant amount of time to process what has happened to me. When you told him then that you couldn't get it out of your head, was it like replaying it in order? Was no. it fragments? Was it here and there? Was it, you it know? It was fragments. It was even smells. It was just a mix of parts of what had happened. Okay. I'm going to have to take you back now to going to the farmer's house. Yes. Mr. Sipples, okay? Yes. What do you remember about going there? I remember... A farmer, he took me into his house, sat me down, and got me a blanket. Before you got to his house, where were you going? I mean, do you remember how you got there at all? I just remember stumbling down a road, falling on a paved road a few times, just feeling like I could barely get my feet to move. And I noticed some cars in a driveway, and I thought, someone's home I have to, I have to see if someone's home do you know at all when you fell um what happened to the well first of all you were carrying the knife and the phone I think yes yeah when you fell did something happen to those when I fell the first time I had hit my hand very hard in the phone I dropped the phone and I broke the phone and what about the knife the knife I just dropped were you trying to hide them no. I think you were talking about what Mr. Sipple did when you got there. Yes. When you got there, was there some point where somebody asked you your name? Yes. Do you remember at all what you said when you were there? I, no. Do you know whether when you were there what your state of mind was? I was just panicked. Okay, I'm going to ask you about your name, Monica Carlin. Yes. You've heard the testimony that you gave your name as Monica Carlin. Yes, I've heard that. And I think as you're saying now, you don't remember doing that. No. Was there an earlier time in your life when you had a traumatic car accident? Yes. What happened then? Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes. I believe I was asking about a traumatic accident you once had with a horse. Yes. Can you just briefly tell me about that? I had just gotten my license and I was returning some movies to town and I was driving my car and... and first of all, how old were you? You said you'd just gotten your license. 16. Okay. I was driving and a horse and buggy bolted through a stop sign and went through my windshield. After that happened and the horse went through your windshield, what happened to you? I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. A couple of years later, did you have another car accident? Yes, I did. When you had the second car accident, what did you do that time? That time, I had blacked out and opened my eyes and I was in the ditch on the side of the highway. I had gone through a fence. After you were on the ditch on the side of the highway, did you go to the hospital again? Yes. Who visited you there? My mother and my boyfriend at the time, Jason. And when you were in the hospital, did what were they what were you talking about at the hospital the second time? The second time at the hospital when I woke up, I was asking, where's the horse? Is the horse okay? Is everybody okay? I was, was there a horse in the second accident? No, I, had, I was right back into the first accident I had had. And what name did you give after that? I gave my name Monica. Do you know this because you remember it, or were the people who with you told you you had done this? 
The people that were with me had told me that this had, was happening. Your Honor, I'm going to object to this as being hearsay. All right, sustain on hearsay. And no. ask that, and that, that be stricken. Last would be stricken. Okay. Now, after um, I'm going to go back to this. So when you're at the farmer's house, yes. Are you aware of just happened to you? Of what had just happened to you at that point? At that point, I was. I wasn't aware of much other than being panicked and terrified and hurt. You said you were attacked by them. Is them a word you would use referring to a singular person? Yes. And why do you sometimes call a singular person them or they? I've been known to do this many times. It's a pronoun that I've been used, that I've been used to using. It's neutral. Did you, you said you were attacked, but without giving details when you were there. Why was that? I said I was attacked because of the feeling of fear of having to get away from this individual, of feeling like someone was coming or that I was hurt by someone and that something had happened. I looked down at my clothes and I could see they were open and I was terrified. The police came. Did you talk to the police? Yes. Do you have any memory of those conversations? No. Do you know um, how you got to the hospital? By ambulance. Do you have any memory of that ambulance ride? No. What about getting to the hospital? Do you remember what happened once you got to the hospital? I remember bits and pieces of what had happened when I got to the hospital because they had started to take my clothes. Do you remember doctors, nurses, anything else? It's all, I barely remember faces. It's a, it's a blur of movement and people checking in and people being with me constantly and talking to me and asking me questions and prodding and poking at me. Do you remember um, any of your statements to the police that day? That day, the first night at the hospital? No. Was there a point in the hospital where your memory began to return to you? Yes. When was that? The point when things started to flood back to me was when I finally was able to take a shower that night. And I went to get some soap or shampoo from the wall. And when I pumped it onto my hand, I felt how much it stung. And I looked down and I could see my hand was cut. and. I could feel everything start to come back. Was that, all right, let me start that. The next day, Detective Proc came to see you. Yes. Do you remember talking to him? It's, I do remember speaking with him, yes. Do you remember speaking with him twice, or is it a blur, or how do you recall that? My talks with Proc, when I remember them, it feels like it's just one interview. It doesn't feel distinctly two different interviews for me. All right. Whether you remember it as one or two, Detective Proc came to see you the next day and he was asking you where Alex was. Yes. And the next day when he's asking you where Alex was, did you tell him about no. what had happened? I did not tell him, no. Why not? I was overwhelmed and I was terrified. I didn't, I, I didn't know what to do. When you don't tell him, were, was there any thought in your head that had you told him some help could be gotten for Alex or what did you think had happened to Alex at that point? At that point, I thought Alex was dead. Was that also something you thought as you cut Boy into your arm and ran away from the car? Yes. Why did you tell Detective Proc that Alex put Boy in your arm? Why I told him this was that I was afraid that because I did this to wake myself up that he wouldn't believe that anything else that had happened to me was true. But at this point, you're not telling him the other things that have happened to you? No. And you're making a decision not to? Yes. Why is that? because of how terrified I am of what had happened. 
The next day, and, and again, I realize these seem like one incident to you, but Detective Brock comes back with another investigator, yes. Mr. Conkey, and he's asking you questions, and you don't tell him then right away either. No. Do you know why? Because of how terrified I was. I wasn't ready to tell anybody. I didn't know how to process this. I didn't know how to handle this. At some point in that conversation, he told you that they had found your car. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. When he told you that, did you start talking about what happened? Yes, it started to come out then. And eventually, in that conversation, not right away, did you tell him that you had put the word boy in your arm? Yes. And again, were you hesitant to tell him that? Yes. I mean, even after you told him all of these things and what happened, were you yes, hesitant? Yes, I was. And why was that? Because after I told him, I still had that thought in my mind that he would assume that because I had done this, anything else that happened to me was my fault. Ezra, the night before this happened, did you have a talk with your father? Yes. What was that talk? I'm sorry. <clears throat> that talk with my father was about life starts now. And when you had that talk, did you plan to start life by killing Alex? No. Did you come to Eau Claire to kill him? No. What were you hoping to do when you saw Alex? I was hoping we could be friends still, even after everything that happened between us. I have no further questions at this time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a 15-minute recess.